Good morning on this beautiful, terrific Tuesday. <clears throat> Reading about uh, David, King David, uh, some more in our scriptures in 2 Samuel 23 and 24. And this one, man, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm just going to be really upfront with you. Uh, I've read this now three or four times. Um, preparing for this and I, I got one message from it and it was powerful and it stuck with me and reread it and it just it's like there's it just takes me deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and, and quite frankly guys there there's some things in this that I don't have my answers to yet God I'm still seeking God on it um, but I, I just want to share with you I guess um, I, I'll share with you the original revelation that God used in my heart because I believe it was from God and so this is David. Um, he, he's been praising God through uh, all that he's been delivered from. And then we read in 2 Samuel 23, um, a, a, and then starts chapter 24, where he decides, he decides to take a census of the people. And as a result of taking that census, um, God's going to punish the people of Israel so I first thought that Dave, that God was punishing David because in verse 10 it says, but after he, David, had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I've sinned greatly by taking the census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. So Gad, who is his prophet, came to him and David is telling him, uh, you know, that he's sorry that he'd done this, uh, but Gad tells him, uh, said, the next morning the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, who was David's seer, which is another word for prophet. This was the message, go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments and I will inflict it on you. So Gad told David, choose either three years of famine through your land, three months of fleeing from your enemies, or three days of severe plague throughout your land. Think this over and decide what the answer I should give the Lord who sent me. And David says, I'm in a desperate situation, um, but let us fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy is great. So see, David thought about these three options, um, three years of, of famine that would impact everybody, fleeing three years from the enemy or three months of plague. And David decided that the three months of plague left him and all of the, mainly, I believe David's heart was mainly for the people here. It left the people at the mercy of God. Where the famine, they may be at the mercy of men uh, in order to get food and fleeing from men it kept that human factor in it where the plague was all God. And so David was trusting on the mercy of God through the plague. But then it goes, goes on. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning and it lasted for three days, not three months. And a total of 70,000 people died throughout the nation. So if 70,000 died in three days, how many would have died in three months? And um, <laughs> But as the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, this is enough. And at that moment, the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. But these people are innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. This is the man whose heart was for God. He was willing to sacrifice himself and his family for the people because he felt like he was the one that sinned. And, and, he, and he didn't want them to um, continue to die. So... <clears throat> So he buys a piece of land and then he makes a sacrifice unto the Lord uh, as an atonement for the sin and the plague stopped. Uh, you know, and I, I just, um, 
we saw David fail with Bathsheba, and now we see David fail in the census. And, and God just showed me that it's like a hiccup in the road. Um, to begin with, God ordered David to do this. And David did it knowing it was a sin against God. He wasn't supposed to take this census. And 70,000 died. And, and I'll wrap this up with this is what continues to speak to my heart. So by faith, I answer the call of God on my life, whatever that is. And the call changes throughout our lives. Uh, for a period of time, I was called to be a student. I was in school, I was in grade school, I was in high school, I was in college. For a while, I was called to be a wife because I got married and I didn't have children. And then I was called to be a mother. Um, I'm married with children and I'm, I answer the call for that, that season of life to be a mother. Our calls changes by seasons. Um, and then there's deep inside of us, there's a purpose and not often, how do I wanna say it? There, a call and a purpose are two different things and yet the call will always align itself with a purpose. So our purpose in life is to be a living sacrifice unto God every single day, to die to myself, not make it about me. Lord, I'm yours today. What do you want to do with me today? And in seasons, he'll have us be a student. For a season, he'll have us uh, be a business person. For a season, he'll have us be a father or mother or, or brothers or an aunt or an uncle. Or, um, and so we answer the purpose in our life. We answer the call on our life by faith. Now, we don't have any, as believers, we don't have any trouble believing that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. We believe it. I mean, nobody's going to ever convince me that didn't happen. It's off the negotiating table. Don't even try. Uh, I mean, my walls, my ears will close off so fast for anybody to try to scientifically tell me that that's impossible. I already know it's impossible, but I already know it happened. It's truth in my life. It is set solid in my heart. Well, why not then the call I have on my life being set solid in my life? Why not um, the purpose that I'm supposed to accomplish? And you know what? I really think it is. I, I know that I know that I'm his and that I'm today, I'm to do what he wants me to do today. But what he showed me through Bathsheba, the sin with Bathsheba, what he showed me through the sin of the of the census with David is those are hesitations in the faith walk. I, I'm called, I am called to run the business that God created from the ground floor up today. In, in 2018, June the 5th, 2018, I am the president owner of Inman Financial, which is a business that God built from the ground floor up through me and my husband. So why then, if I know that, and I know that I know, I've got scriptures to back it up, why then at times when it comes time to make a capital investment, do I hesitate? Oh, is this what I'm supposed to do? That's a, that's a census taking moment. Why, why when it's time to um, uh, create a new division and I get started in it and I know that that's what I'm supposed to do, but it's hard, do I say, oh, but it's hard. Maybe I missed you, God. God really... I, if if I if this if I'm doing what you wanted me to do, wouldn't it be easier? That is a Bathsheba moment in my life, and this is where God really wrecked me in the reading. What is the fallout from David taking the census? Seventy thousand died. I can't even imagine how David felt to stand up on the hillside looking out after just three days and there's 70,000 dead, knowing it was his census. But I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine. Well here, this is what God revealed to me because I asked him to make this about my spirit walk. Yes, it's physical, historical information written down that I absolutely believe. I believe 70,000 people lost their lives in these three, I believe that. With everything in me, I believe that's a historical event that happened. Okay, Lord, I had to, and see, my, my early years of reading this, I had to understand the historical content. It, it was part of the plan for me to read and just get the physical part of it. 
I'm at a phase in my life where I want the spiritual side. And I'm asking him to show me spiritually how does this help me today in 2018. And he shows me that when I answer the purpose in my life, when I answer the call on my life, and I, I lack faith, I, I'm not activating the faith, and I hesitate, 70,000 may die spiritually. So I'm walking around earth on any given day, drive into Tulsa, Oklahoma, there may be 70,000 dead people around me, physically, not, not so, but spiritually dead. You see what I'm saying? Spiritually dead. You know, when I was spiritually dead for 15 years when I believed God was mad at me, when I believed that I couldn't fulfill the purpose he had for me because I'd sinned too much that I'd made too many wrong decisions. I, I, was, I was spiritually dead when I made the decision to divorce my first husband, contrary to what God's good and perfect plan was for my life. I was spiritually dead. There are those dead people around us sitting in the pews with us every Sunday. There are people sitting around us in our jobs, in our environment, in our schools, and wherever you're at, they're dead. And because I, I start something that God tells me to do, and then I, oh, I, I, I let fear in, I let doubt in, you name it. I get distracted. You know, we talk about our eyes moving off the path. 70,000 people just died just because I did that. Oh, he wrecked me with this. When I, <laughs> and he used the NBA playoffs. I was watching these professional players. Have you heard this? Have I already shared this with you? So I read this and he wrecks me and a few other things happen and I get text messages that makes me cry and things like that. But God, I mean, this is this is why we do this. I'm, I'm pondering, I'm meditating on this and I come in to relax and my husband has the NBA playoffs up. And so we have these major NBA players that, practice for hours at a time and so you know here's the three-point line uh, that if they're behind that line and they make a basket they're gonna get three points instead of two right so here he comes down the court and he's got another professional player in place waving his hands in his face trying to distract him the three-point lines here this player comes up with this defender on him and he gets swoosh and he makes the basket and he's a long ways from that three-point line. And, and this is what God showed me. He showed me the confidence that that player had when he come up down the court, being trailed, actually, the defender was in front of him. The, his enemy was in front of him, and he never hesitated. He jumped up over him and over the top of that other player. He makes the basket, and he's a long way. You know, this is what didn't happen. The NBA player didn't come up and say, oh, Lord, do you want me to, to, to shoot this far away from the three-point line? Oh, can I do that? Well, what if I miss? None of that happened because there was zero hesitation because the faith was there that he had been prepared for such a time as this to make that basket. And it happened over and over. And then God had me think about what some of the criticism, because one of those major players is from Oklahoma and he's been called a traitor because he went to another team. So I've heard lots of criticism and they'll say, oh, they just fool themselves. Just so he get, his, his ego got a hold of him. He, you know what God was showing Elizabeth though, speaking to Elizabeth, if you don't have ego in who you are in me, you'll hesitate. If you don't have knowledge of who you are in me, as you step into my plan I have for your life, you'll hesitate and 70,000 will die. My hesitation, I, I never thought of the cost to others in my hesitation in my faith walk to obey God minute by minute, second by second. Because three days versus three months is monumental. So if I spend three days in doubt, Lord, I thought you wanted me to start this part of this business. I thought you wanted me to expand in this way, but it's been hard. Did I miss you? The moment I stop and say, did I miss you? 
I'm not in my faith walk. And I'm not walking in the power of the spirit that he's given me that lives on the inside of me, which is what we're learning about in the Acts, is the power of the living God that lives on the inside of us to walk it out without hesitation. Because here's the deal. Even if we miss, now let me just say it this way. Even when we miss, he, in our weakness, he's made strong, the Bible says. When we miss, he gets greater glory than if we do it right all the time. Because if we do it right all the time, we don't need him. So why do I fear missing him when it's when I miss him that he's glorified the most? Oh, oh my, I would walk up, I would, I would run up. I would run up to the three-point line and say, do you really want me to throw this basket from th this ball from this far? That, he showed me that. I don't want to hesitate, Lord. Take that hesitation out of me. I don't, I don't want to fear the miss because I will never shoot if I'm afraid of the miss. I, don't want, I, don't, I have nothing to fear when I step out in faith if I do miss God, because he's greater than any mistake I'll ever make. I can't make a mistake bigger than God is. I got goosebumps, y'all. Even sitting here, I've, and I've discussed this with several people already because it's impacted me so profoundly. We can't miss, we win. We've read the, we've read the end of the book, we win. What are we afraid of? What are you afraid of? Pray. That's your first step. Pray. You invite God in. He's a gentleman. He's not going to push himself on you. The first step is you pray. Ask him to fill you full of his Holy Spirit. And in case you would doubt that you're full of his Holy Spirit, because you can be full of his Holy Spirit and never have your prayer language. But lest you doubt, ask him for your prayer language. Get your prayer language. You'll know how to pray the mysteries of God when you have your prayer language. It's important. Pray and then listen. Listen and then read. It is the formula for success in our lives. And you know what? In 2018, finally, I'm making it more about God than I ever have. And I don't have to fear when I fail. I don't have to fear when people say, do you think she really has the guts to go on video? I don't care what they say. All I care about is my father. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And these stories are getting me there. More and more. Are you coming with me? Is it just me? Send me some messages. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know that these videos are impacting you. Is this something I should continue? If God's putting it inside of you to send me a private message, I'm asking you to do that. I'm asking you to share it. If, if indeed this is helping you be more dedicated in your reading of the Bible, share it. Uh, share my Facebook page. Share the YouTube videos. Um, let's get the good news out there. Not about Elizabeth, but it's all about him. So have a terrific Tuesday.